Hi, welcome to my presentation. My name is Kim Hee. I'm a PhD candidate at Heidelberg University Hospital in Mannheim. So um, today, I'm going to talk about really uh, buzzword, deep learning. Everybody talks about deep learning. And I want to add a couple of more buzzword efficiency and pruning and quantization. So, um, well, so it's part of my working paper. I'm currently making many experiments and some of the results I want to bring it today and share with you and I want to learn something um, out of the experiment with you. I try to make the, this talk less technical. It's very technical talk, um, but I, I, I try to make it more entertaining. So um, before I start my talk, I want to talk a little bit about my laboratory, the um, institute I am affiliated. Um, so my laboratory, we are kind of software development company, and at the same time, we are doing research. So my daily work, I am implementing infrastructure for the hospital. We are building up data integration center with using open source tool, like uh, shown on the symbol on, on here. Um, this is because we, we have to make data integration center in Germany as a um, part of medical informatics initiative uh, by government. And uh, there are four consortium. We are a partner of one consortium called Miraculum. Uh, it's highlighted in blue color. Uh, we are the largest one. And I think we are the coolest one because we are only using open source tool. We are not buying third par party solution. Uh, just for your information, data and hospital, there are a lot is shown on the um, uh, right bottom corner, they're like hierarchical structure and they're all different sort of data. I just want to give you some impression. They're complex, hierarchical, and has time, time stamp and it's kind of growing over time. So when I joined my laboratory, my professor gave me a mission for my PhD topic. Do something for infectious disease. It's desperately, desperately general, isn't it? So I was a bit hmm, confused. I don't know what to do. And I read um, many papers uh, working on this field about infectious disease. And I wanted to kind of find some um, studies to make the things automated and make it faster. And then I, I come up with a uh, paper uh, which is uh, written here published in 2018 by uh, people from Harvard. They make the Gramstein image analysis, they make it automated. Um, and they made it pretty good, um, which highlighted in the red box. So sensitiv sensitivity and specificity, it's higher than 95% except one. So they're, they make quite a good solution, but, but um, to make a um, classification of one image takes about nine minutes, which is, to me, it's, it's nonsense. I mean, the human can do it faster. Even though the image is pretty big, it's about one gigabyte of image for one single image, like you see the, the pixel over there. But it's too slow, so I find, hmm, this would be my topic for my PhD. So I, uh, it, this led me to this topic today. Um, so, but I'm not the only one who find out this challenge. There are a lot of people, researchers, and big IT corporation, they're working on um, make deep learning, training, and inference faster without losing model performances. And then I find this graph is quite, um, it's, it's showing what's going on in this field. Uh, this graph is made by Professor Han from MIT University. And um, first of all, I want to highlight that there are two um, kind of solutions to tackle this problem. So one is about um, algorithm um, side. So mathematically, you want to tackle this problem to make it faster. Another one, hardware innovation to make the pro uh, processing faster. And also, I want to make a distinction uh, what to make it fast. Do you want to make it um, do you want to make training faster or do you want to make inference faster? So um, there are two different distinctions. And today we only cover on the uh, left up corner. We want to make inference time faster 
um, mathematical solution with mathematical solution. Uh, one is about pruning, another one is quantization. So I think, I'm not sure. Ha, um, please raise your hands. Uh, is there anyone who worked on big deep learning project before? Good. And have you ever applied this technique, pruning or quantization? Oh, nice. Great. So maybe we can be good friends later. We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> so about the first impression, because uh, most of people, you don't really um, know about, heard of this terminology. So let's clarify a little bit. Um, so about quantification, oh, not sorry, quantization, um, it's, I think this is a quite good motivating example. So instead of many decibel number, you just want to use in, integer number to, to, for the processing. And this is, this is good enough. And sometimes it makes the uh, performance even better. I'm going to uh, prove it later on uh, following slide. And uh, it reduced quite a lot of bits. So usual computation, you need 32 bits for floating number. But with integer uh, quantization, you need just 8 bits, which you, know, you see that four times, minimum four times, you save the uh, memory space. Uh, and about pruning, it's more um, intuitive. There are lots of you know, connection between neurons to the layers. And um, most of them, they're not so significant. So the parameter I'm talking about, because it's like linear algebra between neuron to neuron. And uh, if, if it's not so significant, you can just rid of it. And it doesn't really harm the performance. So that's about pruning and uh, quantization. And uh, why this talk matter to you? Um, well, I would say, if, unless you're going to retire within five or 10, ten years, this deep learning, you have to deal with it. You cannot avoid it. And also, um, the graph on the right upper corner, this is um, the energy consumption uh, at Facebook data center. And it's doubling every year. And you, you know that the association between uh, global warming and ener energy consumption, and that really matter to, to us and also next generation. And also, um, number of IoT devices, it's also called edge devices, is increasing quite rapidly. And uh, I have checked the uh, specification of Google Glass. And uh, it's not really powerful as computer, user uh, computer you have. So Google Glass consists of two gigabytes of memories and 12 gigabytes of storage, usable storage size, which is not really big. So you have to compress the model um, to, to deploy the solution on such a small device. Um, this is what's happening um, behind for the quantization. Well, pruning is easy. You just read off like not really significant parameter within biases. Uh, quantization is more complex. I don't want to go into uh, detail, but that's what's going on. You kind of quantize not every single computation, but some of them, and then you um, add either. You don't really use integer, but there you use 32-bit, um, but I don't want to go into detail, but that's what's going on behind. And this, this is happening just for one single neuron. And you can imagine there are thousands of neurons for the deep learning uh, network. And uh, in order to prune and quantize your model, you have to have a model, right? And uh, I don't want to, I didn't want to build up my own model because there are already many great um, solutions uh, openly accessible. Uh, maybe you, you have heard of Inception and ResNet and MobileNet. Those trees are quite popular model. And I uh, just download it. And then I fine tune to, to my image data set, which you have seen in the beginning, Gramstein images, which is uh, gram positive or gram negative. So fairly uh, straightforward and simple, uh, the image I'm using. And then I didn't want to pick up the fine tuning parameter randomly. Now, I didn't follow my intuition. So I made um, like 10 times of experiment of each of the hyperparameters, and then um, pick up the highest average performance 
to to uh, further prune and quantize. Just for your information, I didn't pick up the random uh, the model randomly. And then uh, finally, we end up to uh, the first result graph. Uh, so it's really tiny. The the um, point highlighted in red color, it's uh, outcome of inception model. Blue one, it's model of ResNet. Purple on the left side, it's uh, mobile net model uh, performance. And x-axis is the size of the model. And then uh, y-axis is accuracy. So you can see, like some of the mobile net, it's super tiny, like three megabytes. Uh, you you don't have good performance, which I'm going to address it later. But like uh, those on, on the uh, left upper corner, even less than 10 megabyte of model size, you do fairly good. Um, you you make fairly good uh, outcome, about 90% of uh, accuracy. Well, also what we can learn from this graph, inception outperform compared to other model or my problem. I don't want to say inception is better than other model for general problem, but you have to therefore empirically make experiment. Um, maybe ResNet is better, it's better for other problem like detection, object detection, or other image input. So in particularly my problem, inception performed better. And also I see some fluctuation, more fluctuation on the mobile net, which is um, quite interesting. I found I wanted to go more digging into particularly those, uh, the one on the left bottom corner, uh, which has quite high sparsity. So I read of 90% of the connection, the parameter. Um, and it kind of make random guessing. 55% of accuracy is really random guessing. And um, I wanted to analyze more why it behaves such and how can I improve it. And I got inspiration from this study uh, from Stanford University and Sue et al. They also end up first really low accuracy for a bit complicated problem compared to mine. I'm, I'm classifying just two type, positive or negative, but this guy using ImageNet data set has 1,000s of classes, so it's a bit complex than mine. But what they did, they trained really, really long. So basically here on the x-axis, you see like uh, scientific notation e to the power of 5. So if they train 60,000s of epoch, Epoch is uh, one cycle you go through whole training data set. And then it recovers the accuracy. So that was kind of inspiration to me. So let's train longer to the mobile net with 90% of sparsity. And uh, beforehand, I stopped at 100 of epochs. And I trained 5,000 of times of um, epoch for the training. And then it really um, kind of performing better and better. It took about two days because uh, my laboratory has quite powerful GPU. Tesla Vorta, this costs more than 20,000 of euro, one GPU. So it's a bit expensive than a small car. Um, so it took two days, but with normal computer, I think it would take really many, many days, maybe a month. And um, right. So that's I found quite interesting. Maybe with 10,000s of epoch longer training, I think I would end up to 90% of accuracy. So uh, some results of quantization. I didn't have all the results which I was ex expecting. <laughs> Therefore, some columns are empty, which I'm going to collect it next uh, coming week. Uh, what we can learn from here, so I only showing you the result of um, well, one model, mobile net model, with different sparsity ra ratio. So 50% I read of parameter, and 0% meaning I didn't read of any parameter. So it's kind of um, acting as a baseline model. Um, what we can learn from here, I find it's interesting. Well, 
reducing number of bits, it really doesn't harm at all. Sometimes it even uh, performs better, especially here, like eight ins, it performs better than 32 slots uh, with zero sparsity ratio. But uh, the compression ratio compared to the given model, it's uh, quite impressive. Uh, second, what we can learn, combination of pruning and uh, quantization that leads you better result, I, I learned. So those on the first upper four uh, result accuracy, you see generally perform one or two percent better than um, no pruning technique. Um, and um, well, latency, I observed that I, I tested with uh, the computer server with powerful GPU, but it doesn't really give me, um, it doesn't really reduce the time, and I wonder why it happened. I ex expect to have much less time to execute this classification, but I um, noticed that this quantization is converting um, the, the computation based on different op well, uh, hardware operation. So I was training, I trained the model with CPU, uh, 86 based CPU, and after conversion it works only good for the ARM based CPU, which which is even used on mobile phone and also small devices. So it didn't really perform good on the powerful server. So I need to kind of uh, work on it uh, to test correctly. So that's it. Take away from my talk. Uh, maybe you can remember two keywords, pruning and quantization. That gives you good outcome and also it reduces the model size dramatically. Um, right, this is I think the most important message you can take away. So if you have any question, maybe we don't have enough time, maybe later on we can talk, we can chat. Thank you. Thank you very much.